to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John, verse number 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. We welcome you today to our study of the religion of Islam. And today in particular, we're looking at the Islamic view of Jesus. How does Islam view Jesus Christ? And naturally then, how do Muslims view Christians? Because however Islam views the Lord and Savior is how their followers view us today. And so we hope you'll get your Bible, find it out, have it handy, as we're going to be studying together, looking at the religion of Islam and what the Bible says and how they view one another. And so we think today about this subject and we hope that you'll, if you haven't got the series of lessons on Islam, we'd encourage you to order that. You can go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, fill out a media request form, and we'd be happy to send you the whole series on Islam free of charge. And as always, if you've got a Bible question, uh, you're concerned over spiritual matters, we'd love to help you in that matter. You can write to us or call us or email us from our website. And as always, we encourage you in your local area to visit the Church of Christ. You'll find uh, people there who love God, love His Word, and are always looking to meet new people who want to know more about God. As we consider today the Islamic view of Jesus, we're going to be thinking about how does Muhammad, how did Muhammad view Christ, and how do Muslims view Christians today? As we begin our study, there are some contradictions to say the least in the Quran over their view of Christians. Let me illustrate. In the Quran chapter 2, verse number 62, here's what allegedly Allah said. Lo, those who believe in that which was revealed unto you, Muhammad, and those who are Jews and Christians and Sabaeans, whoever believes in Allah and the last day and does right, surely their reward is with their Lord, and there shall no fear come upon them, neither shall they grieve. And so, in essence, in this context, Muhammad says, allegedly Allah said through Muhammad, Jews, Christians, Sabaeans, if they believe in Allah, they believe in the last day, if they do right, they'll have their reward. And so, everybody can believe what they want, they're going to be okay, is kind of the idea. Well, later then, in chapter 2, verse 87, here's what is said. And verily we gave unto Moses the Scripture, and we caused a train of messengers to follow after him. We gave unto Jesus, the son of Mary, clear proofs of Allah's sovereignty, and we supported him with the Holy Spirit. And so Jews and Christians, if they do right, follow Allah, look for the last day, they're okay. Like Moses, Jesus was from Allah allegedly, and the miracles and the things he did are proofs he was of Allah. And so we're okay, Jesus is okay, but then in chapter 2, Verse 135 and 136, here's what the Quran says. And they say, this is the unbelievers as it were, and they say, Be Jews or Christians, then you'll be rightly guided. Say unto them, O Muhammad, no, but we follow the religion of Abraham the upright, and he was not of the idolaters. Say, O Muslims, we believe in Allah, and that which is revealed unto us, and that which was revealed unto Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, the tribes, that which Moses and Jesus received, that which the prophets received from their Lord, we make no distinction between any of them, and unto him we have surrendered. Now, as you think about, as you think about these ideas, there's some inconsistencies here. If Jews and Christians are okay, if Jesus was a prophet confirmed by Allah just like Moses, and then if you go on to say, no, you can't be Christians, you can't do what they say, you got to follow Allah, anybody who doesn't isn't right. Well, friend, we've got some big problems there. Are Christians actually okay? 
Was Jesus really a prophet of God? Because what Jesus taught does not align with what Islam teaches today. They are diametrically opposed to each other and you can't have it both ways. You can't have Jesus as a prophet, Christians as okay, and then back up and say things like they say. Be Christians or Jews, you be guided and say, no, that's not right. You've got to follow Abraham, not the idolaters. Which way are you going to have it? You can't have it both ways in the Quran, and that shows even their inconsistency and contradiction among these things. And so, was Jesus just merely a prophet? No, he was more than a prophet. Deuteronomy 18, verse 22, when a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. He's more than a prophet. Jesus is. For in John 1, verses 1 through 3, the scripture says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Listen to this now. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. And so not, not just a prophet. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God revealed in the flesh. Now, here's another interesting passage from the Quran about Jesus. In the Quran, chapter 2, verse number 253, it says this, Of these messengers some of whom we have caused to excel others, and of whom there are some unto whom Allah spoke, while some of them he exalted above others in degree. Now listen to this. And we gave Jesus, son of Mary, clear proofs of Allah's sovereignty, and we supported him with the Holy Spirit. And so allegedly in the Quran, it was Allah who gave Jesus the Holy Spirit, supported him, and he's held up as one of the high prophets. Well, how can we have it both ways? Because what Jesus taught and what Jesus said, the New Testament doctrine, the building of His church, Christianity, that's different than what you find in the religion of Islam and the Quran. The two are not compatible. And to say Jesus had the Holy Spirit and He was a prophet of God is actually saying things against the religion of Islam and the Quran. All right, the Quran teaches that Jesus... Now, here's what we want to do. Since we've seen that the Quran said Jesus had the Holy Spirit, was a prophet of God, let's see what the Quran says, and let's see what Jesus says. If they contradict, then we've got a big problem in the Quran either way. Here's what the Quran says in chapter 3, verse number 59. It says that Jesus was actually a created being. The similitude of Jesus before Allah is that of Adam. He, this is Allah, created him from dust, then said to him, Be, and he was. And so when you read the Quran, it says uh, Jesus is like Adam. He created him before Adam, maybe. He was created from the dust. God said, Come into existence, and he came into existence. And that's not what Jesus said, and that's not what the Bible says. In the first book of the Old Testament, then God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every creeping thing that creeps on the air. And Colossians later says this in Colossians 1, verse 15 and 16. Of Jesus Christ it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through Him and for Him. Is Jesus a created being? Does the Bible teach that? No. John 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by Him. And so here we again got a clear contradiction that I don't want you to miss. The Quran said, Jesus is a prophet of Allah. The Quran said we supported him by giving him the Holy Spirit, holding him up to a very high degree. And then Jesus' own teachings in the New Testament contradict what the Quran says about his creation. Can't have it both ways. Either way, 
the Quran does not come out in a good light with these things. All right, what does the Quran teach about Jesus' death, crucifixion, or resurrection? It teaches that it was a farce. Listen to chapter 4 of the Quran, verse 157. And because of their sayings, these are the polytheists or the unbelievers, and because of Christians, and because of their saying, we killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger. They slew him not, nor crucified him, but it appeared so unto them. And lo, those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof. They have no knowledge thereof, save pursuit of conjecture. They slew him not for certain. Next verse says this in the Quran, verse 158, But Allah took him up unto himself. Allah was forever mighty and wise. Verse 159 says, There is not one of the people of the Scripture, but will believe in him before his death, and on the day of resurrection he will be a witness against them. So no death, no crucifixion, no resurrection. It just kind of looked like it, and instead God took him up. My friend, that's the heart and core of the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus. Crucifixion are the heart and core of the gospel. And the teaching of Jesus and his disciples confirms that. The Bible teaches absolutely. We have it in the accounts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We have Jesus referring to his own death, saying that it's upcoming. We have him after he's been risen. And here we have the heart and core of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 3 and 4 says this, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And so friend, we now must ask ourselves another perplexing and important question. The Quran claimed Jesus was a prophet, that Jesus was a prophet confirmed by the Holy Spirit. And now the Quran claims things that Jesus claimed the opposite of. How can we mesh those two ideas? Either way, the Quran comes out looking like a liar on these things. And so this again is inconsistencies and contradictions in the Quran. If you're going to claim Jesus is a prophet of God and then you're going to teach something that is the exact opposite of what Jesus taught, friend, that doesn't help your case at all to be validated and your message to be seen as true. The Quran also claims that Jesus himself was just a prophet like any other. Chapter 4, verse number 163 says this, Lo, we inspire thee as we inspired Noah and the prophets after him, as we inspired Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes and Jesus and Job and Jonah and Aaron and Solomon as we imparted to David the Psalms. And so uh, they claim Jesus, he's just a prophet like any other prophet. What does the scripture say? Psalm 110 verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Interestingly enough, that's David saying to Christ, Acts chapter 2, sit at my right hand. That's Christ saying, David, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Showing Christ is superior to David and that he is more than just a prophet. In fact, the scripture, Jesus will claim he's more than just a prophet. John 8, verse 58, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus didn't claim just to be a prophet. He claimed to be the great I am who called Moses to deliver God's people out of Egyptian bondage. When Moses said to God, Okay, God, you want me to lead these people? You want me to tell Pharaoh to let them go? Who do you want me to tell Pharaoh sent me? Say, I am sent you. And Jesus said, Let me tell you about that I am. That's me. And so Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. He claimed to be God Himself. All right, in the Quran, we also find the teaching that Jesus is not God's Son. Chapter 4, verse number 171 of the Quran says this, O people of the Scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion, nor utter aught concerning Allah except the truth, the Messiah, 
Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah, and his word which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers, and say not three, cease. It is better for you, Allah is only one God. Listen to this now. Far be it removed from his transcendent majesty that he should have a son. His is all that is in the heavens and all that is on the earth. Allah is sufficient as defender. And so basically the Quran says, you want to believe Jesus is a prophet? You want to believe his message to Mary? Good and well. But don't act like he's the son of God. He was not the Son of God. God cannot have a son. He's only one God, and He's sufficient. Okay, so that's what the Quran says. The Quran said Jesus is a prophet. Now, don't forget that. What did Jesus say? Listen to Matthew 17, 5. God's voice, according to the teaching of Jesus, boomed down from heaven on the Mount of Transfiguration and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear Him. John 20, verse 30 and 31 records, And truly, Jesus did many other signs which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. All right, let's weigh the two again. The Quran said Jesus is a prophet. The Quran said Jesus was even endowed with the Holy Spirit as proof of a prophet from God. As a prophet of God, Jesus said he was the Son of God. The Quran contradicts that. Either way, the Quran does not come out looking like a message from God. The Quran con contradicts its own teaching and it's inconsistent in these ideas and it is not trustworthy to be followed from God. Now the Quran says, of course, that Jesus is not God. Chapter 5, verse 17 says this, They indeed have disbelieved who say, Lo, Allah is the Messiah, son of Mary. And yet Jesus said in John 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. John 20, verse 28, Thomas answered and said to Jesus, when, when he saw the nail prints in his hand, the, the piercing in his side, he looked to Jesus and he said, My Lord and my God. What did Jesus mean when he said, I and my Father are one? Well, the Quran says, don't say the Messiah is God. And Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Now again, you can't have it both ways. If Jesus is a prophet, if Jesus was inspired by the Holy Spirit, if Jesus came from God and his message contradicts your message, then friend, the Quran does not come out looking like a reliable trustworthy and believable book. It's inconsistent and it contradicts itself on the teachings of Jesus in many places. All right, another teaching that we find in the Quran is that Muslims are actually taught to believe in the gospel. Chapter 5 verse 46 says, And we call Jesus, son of Mary, to follow in their footsteps, that's the prophets, confirming that which was revealed before him in the Torah, we bestowed on him the gospel, wherein is guidance and a light, confirming that which was revealed before in the Torah, a guidance and an admonition unto those to ward off evil. And so in essence, we're told here to follow Jesus and that Allah gave him the gospel. And Muslims then should believe the gospel. Muslims believe that Allah inspired Jesus to write the Injil, that is the gospel. One of their six pillars of belief in scripture includes the Injil or the gospel. There's only one problem with it. They want to say that it's been corrupted. Been corrupted throughout time. And of course, this is always the cop out. When someone's teaching contradict what Jesus taught, they want to say, well, ours is right and yours has been corrupted. And we can go into showing there's ample evidence to show that the Quran has actually been corrupted, that, it, that Muhammad didn't write much of it, that it came through oral tradition passed down to one of Muhammad's friends, and there's ample evidence to show the Bible has been preserved correctly. But again, they say, listen to the gospel, but the gospel has been corrupted. All right then, let's think about some things that relate to these ideas. One of the things that we find that show to us that the Quran has actually been corrupted is in chapter five, verse number 110 of the Quran, you've got some very interesting and odd things that occur. Here's what we know. When Allah said, O Jesus, son of Mary, 
Remember my favor unto you and unto your mother, how I strengthened you with the Holy Spirit, that, so that you spake unto mankind in the cradle as in maturity, and how I taught the Scripture and wisdom and the Torah and gospel, and how you did shape of clay, as it were, the likeness of a bird by my permission, and didst blow upon it, and it was a bird by my permission. And you didst heal him who was born blind, the leper, by my permission, how that's, thou didst raise the dead by my permission, how I restrained the children of Israel from harming you when you came unto them with clear proofs. And those of them who disbelieve exclaimed, this is nothing else except mere magic. All right, let's think about this. Which has really been corrupted? Which is true and reliable? These fanciful stories in part prove that the Quran is not original and trustworthy. These two stories, which we've just noted, are actually found in two books that predate the Quran. The uh, Jesus turning the clay bird in and, and Jesus doing these other things, where are those found at? Well, they predate the Quran. These are found in the Eric Arabic infancy of the Savior, which is 3rd century, we don't get the Quran until 5th and 6th century, 6th and 7th, and the Gospel of Thomas, which is 3rd and 4th century. And so, which one is a copy, and which one is true? Friend, these stories in the Quran, they were found in books that predate it. They're found in other uh, pseudo pseudographical and apocryphal books. They're found in books that were there before, long before they were, and so why was saying all that? Friend, we want you to see that the Bible is trustworthy and that Quran, the Quran and Muhammad actually was copying other books at his time. Uh, chapter 5 in the Quran, verse 116 says this, And when Allah said, O Jesus, son of Mary, did you say unto mankind, Take me and my mother for two gods besides God? He said, Be glorified. It was not mine to utter to that which I had no right. If I used to say it, then thou knewest it. Thou knowest what is in my mind, I know not what is in thy mind. Lo, the only thou art the knower of things hidden. Well, here's what Jesus said as it relates to worship and giving him worship. Jesus contradicted that. Hebrews 1, 6. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, here's what God says about Jesus. Let all the angels of God worship him. We also find some very odd statements in the Quran about the humanity of Christ. The Quran says in chapter 5 verse 75, the Messiah, son of Mary, was none other than a messenger. Messengers the like of whom had passed away before him. And his mother was a saintly woman, and they both used to eat earthly food, see how we make the revelations clear for them, and see how they are turned away. And so the Quran says he was just a prophet, nothing more than that. Chapter 33, verse 7, When we exacted a covenant from the prophets and from you, O Muhammad, and from Noah and Abraham and Moses and Jesus, son of Mary, we took from them a solemn covenant. And so here we have Jesus seen as a covenant prophet. A prophet, nothing more than a prophet, just a covenant prophet. Well, what did Jesus say about himself? He said he's more than a covenant prophet. He's the covenant bringer and maker. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood of the new covenant, Jesus said, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so Jesus didn't just claim to be a prophet. He claimed to establish the uh, covenant, not just a covenant maker, giver, but the covenant maker, the one through his blood who established these things. And so what, what do we know about Jesus and his teaching and all the things that go along with that. Friend, the Bible claims he's more than just a prophet. And again, if we're going to take Jesus and his words, we can't have it both ways. If the Quran says Jesus was a prophet and he had the Holy Spirit, and if the Quran is using other books that predate it, then friend, let's put our trust in God and his teaching and not the teaching that we find in these religions. All right, we also find in chapter 57 of the Quran, give me just a couple of other proofs. Chapter 57, verse number 27 in the Quran says this, Then we caused our messengers to follow in their footsteps. We caused Jesus, son of Mary, to follow and gave him the gospel and placed compassion and mercy in the hearts of those who followed him. But monasticism they invented. We ordained it not for them, only seeking Allah's pleasure, and they observed it not with right observance. So we give those of them who believe their reward, but many of them 
are evil liars. Friend, I'm beginning to see as we study uh, the religion of Islam that it was an overreaction to another religion. You see, when we talk about monasticism, we talk about worship of Mary, we talk about all these things, you're going to find that a lot of this at the time that Muhammad was facing these issues, Catholicism was on the rise. And a lot of his teaching, you see the references to the son of the Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the references to the Trinity, and the references to things like that. A lot of that that he did was an overreaction to false teachings of Catholicism as well. And so we hope today, as you think about these things, that you'll study. You'll study about Jesus. You'll study the Scripture. You'll study about what God set forth for Him. And that the ultimate conclusion we can reach and come to is that from the Scripture, from the evidence, Jesus is more than a prophet. He's the Son of God. He's God in the flesh. And that He made the ultimate sacrifice for sin for all time. And the Bible says in Hebrews 9, verse 22, Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. And yet Jesus said, the Bible says of Jesus in Hebrews 10, verse 12, And this man, after he'd offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Hebrews 10, verse 12. We, we read earlier where Jesus said in Matthew 26, 28, This is my blood of the new covenant shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. You contrast Muhammad, his teaching, and his life with the life of Jesus. He committed no sin, nor was guile or deceit found in his mouth. He went about doing good, helping people, trying to save the lost, healing the sick, casting out demons, feeding the hungry. And what did, what did he do? What happened to him? They put him on a cross because he did things they didn't like that were contrary to what they thought, the Jews thought he ought to do. And yet everything he did was good and right and perfect in every way. That's in stark contrast to what we read in other religions and especially from some of the oral tradition about Muhammad and Islam. And so our hope today is that you will turn your eyes toward Jesus, that you'll focus on the Scripture, and that you'll realize we can't have it both ways. If Jesus is a prophet of Islam, He contradicts their teaching, and therefore Islam cannot be true and from God. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about all souls, not your walk. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. Or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905. Or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.